I mean, these companies define themselves as many, many companies do. Their job is to provide a return to the shareholder. And if that means, uh, and they want to do that f completely following the law. Um, but it's difficult tension between when your business model, like oil sands, results in emissions going to the atmosphere that are not fully captured in terms of the cost of, of polluting, um, when that business model is following the law, um, but still keeps increasing an environmental liability like concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So the sweet spot that the companies always came back to was it would be very easy for them to improve their environmental performance, including and maybe especially emissions, if we if Cosia came up with solutions, you know, the collaboration of the companies inside of the organization called Cosia, if they came up with solutions where they would reduce emissions, but they could also make more money at it. That was the sweet spot. And, you know, actually when you sort of play that out, it's sort of more than a sweet spot. And, you know, I heard several, you know, many times, you know, people like Joe Romero, like one of the, the key vice presidents saying like, you know, their company's not gonna invest in reducing emissions if it is a net cost to them. I mean, they will absolutely, you know, aggressively embrace emissions reductions if somehow in that solution, they can make more money at it. COSIA was launched in 2012. It was billed as the first collaboration of its type globally, which is driven by the CEOs top down, all the companies in a sector, and um, a collaboration at a depth that had never been seen before, which means not only working on research projects and innovation, but sharing intellectual property as it existed at, at the time. And we, so we set up an intellectual property sharing framework with a sort of a true up so no one would got taken advantage of. So that was the framing of it. It was designed to accelerate the pace of environmental performance improvement, step change improvement in four areas, land, uh, water, uh, tailings, and greenhouse gas emissions. And I would say the original CEOs that set it up were very deeply committed to making COSIA work. Part of the problem was though, um, those CEOs didn't stick around that long. They started to swap out, they started to retire, they started to, to move. And very soon the constant pressure from the top down that was gonna be required to make COSIA successful was removed. And I think the center of gravity went back to the original culture of those companies, which was we compete with each other. And um, so the, all the sharing promises never really came to fruition. And they did say that we're going to set public environmental performance goals, put them in the public domain and monitor progress against those. That happened for two of the areas, but not for the others. Which two? Uh, that happened for land and for water, but not for tailings and for greenhouse gases. Having said that, I mean, the, thing, the companies did start to work more closely together, but was very clear there was no step change in environmental performance improvement. It was sort of a business as usual type of improvement, which objectively, I'll talk about in terms of emissions, has shown to be about one to one and a half percent emissions reduction annually on average since the inception of the oil sands. And that is the pace of change that we have, that, 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 that we have seen. Now you're talking about emissions intensity, not absolute emissions. Oh, you're, yeah, it's a good distinction. This is all emissions intensity. Emissions, absolute emissions have been constantly tracking upwards as the production increases swamped out the emissions intensity reductions. Thank you.